Hi everyone, Marie here. In today's video, I'd like to stitch the second part of our British Isles stitch along with you and tell you a bit about the landmarks you will be stitching today. I hope you'll enjoy it. In this installment of our cell, we'll be stitching some landmarks in Northwest England, Midlands, East of England, and a bit of London. We'll also stitch my beloved Wales where I currently live, so I'll be very excited to talk a bit more about the Welsh symbols to you. The first object is a football. The modern game of football as we know it originated in England in the 19th century and where better to place football on the map of England than in the area of Liverpool and Manchester. Undisputedly, these two teams are one of the best in the world and the English are very passionate about their football clubs. Going to football matches is positively a family outing in England. You will see families with children of all ages cheering their favourite team on during the matches. Choosing the best symbol to represent the area hasn't been an easy task though, given that the music world owes probably as much to this part of England as football does. Liverpool was the home of none other than the Beatles, while Manchester was the home of iconic Joy Division and my fellow millennials will probably appreciate that Oasis come from here too. Let's stitch Wales next. The traditional Welsh costume, including the iconic Welsh hat, is very much a part of Welsh national identity. Together with Welsh language, the mythology including King Arthur and the beautiful Welsh landscape, with majestic mountains, green valleys, long beaches and ragged cliffs. Speaking of modern Wales, we must mention their love for rugby. It is very much everyone's sport here in Wales and you can find a rugby club in almost every village. Welsh rugby is well established on the international scene, having won the Six Nations Championship 28 times, most recently in 2021. Next, we are stitching on the daffodils, which is Welsh national flower. And very poignantly so now, because it is one of the symbols celebrating St. David's Day on the 1st of March each year. Bunches upon bunches of these happy yellow blossoms can now be seen everywhere. Decorating everything from our dining tables to roundabouts and springing everywhere in the woods and fields. It is a wonderful sign of spring and one of official Welsh national emblems. Let's stitch the Welsh dragon next. A thraig goch in Welsh, there can hardly be a prouder symbol of Wales than this iconic dragon. It is part of the Welsh national flag, which officially only came into being in 1959. However, as the emblem itself of the red dragon dates all the way back to the 7th century AD, some people believe that it is the oldest national flag still in use today. It is hard to do Wales justice in only a few sentences. Therefore, I wholeheartedly invite you to watch The Story of Wales by BBC, presented by Hugh Edwards, available in full on YouTube, perhaps even while you're stitching these symbols. If you love history, you will very much enjoy learning about the rich history of this nation. And speaking of history documents, Netflix has a great series called Secrets of Great British Castles that tells some of the history of the four British nations through the stories of their greatest castles. I have watched the series while stitching on this cell and can thoroughly recommend it to all the history junkies out there. Before we move over back to England, let me just mention our Facebook group Caterpillar Cross Stitch Cells Stitch Along group, with well over 16,000 members sharing their progress and giving each other advice when asked. So many people share wonderful personalizations and tweaks to the British Isles cell there, so you are sure to be inspired when you join. Let's run quickly through the remaining symbols for this month. Birmingham is represented by the bullring, 
Historically, this name dates back to 16th century, when a man called John Cooper was given the right to bait balls at a site opposite St. Martin's Church. The area has become known as the Bull Ring over the years and became a huge outdoor market site. Nowadays, it is commemorated by a bronze statue weighing a whopping six tons and the market stalls were replaced by a state-of-the-art bullring shopping center. The bow and arrow you'll be stitching represents one of the best known English legends, none other than Robin Hood and his legendary fight against the cruel sheriff of Nottingham. We get to stitch the majestic Buckingham Palace this month as well. The magnificent royal residence in the very heart of London and perhaps one of the world's best known symbols of the royal family. The palace will play a major part in the upcoming coronation of King Charles III on Saturday 6th of May 2023. And lastly, alas only partly stitched by me but such is the life of a cross stitcher, a windmill of Norfolk. At one point there were allegedly more than 300 windmills in Norfolk, although a vast majority of them have now disappeared. There are officially 21 windmills in the Norfolk Windmills Trust nowadays and they are certainly worth the visit. Whether in person or through the magic of Google Images, we can all admire the beauty of these majestic buildings. The earliest known windmill in Norfolk was recorded in Rackheath in 1268. If you are stitching the British Isles adventure with us, please share in our Facebook group or tag us on Instagram. We would love to see your progress. And if you'd like to join me and thousands of other stitchers, please head over to our website www.caterpillarcrossstitch.com to get your full kit or just a PDF pattern. And remember that when you sign up to our newsletter, you'll get 10% off of your first order as well as eight free patterns. So don't hesitate and join us on the creative journey of Caterpillar Cross Stitch Stitch Alongs. And that is it from me today. Thank you so much for watching and stitching with me and see you soon.